Right, uh, we've got some important jobs data coming out, so I thought I'd just, uh, it's uh, two minutes to go, I'm just going to show you how I've lined the charts up, and um, I'm looking for a spike, whichever direction that spike goes in, I'm looking for that to give me the heads up on the direction, and I'm going to try and enter on the pullback. Okay, so I'll, uh, let's wait till the data comes out and uh, see if I can get a decent move. And you can see on this FIBS, we have come down to uh, touch yesterday's low in the Euro session. Uh, US Dow opens, cash market opens in an hour and 15 minutes. And we've got this trend line coming across the top. So uh, let's see if this hammer light bar can come up. Uh, the gap fill, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, but the, yeah, the ATMA and the, pretty much the gap fill would be around about the 12,220 mark if we get it. Otherwise, you know, retest of this trend line and maybe a break of the trend line in the US session could give us a heads up. This data that comes out tends to give you a bit of a nudge as to possible um, figures for the non-farm payroll tomorrow. Okay, so we've got a spike up. Gonna let this spike work its way out and see if I can get a pullback. As it's typical in this data that you can't really tell which direction it's going to go from. Typically in the data, prior to the data, you'll have the charts in an apex and um, so it could go either way. I mean, that could have broken down from CBO to the downside or the upside, but um, they've driven it to the upside. Okay, let's see if we can get a pullback. You tend to get a big spike because what happens is uh, a lot of the big boys will put orders for a break of 12,300 or and, and a break of 12,288. If they're unlucky they'll, and it whips, they'll get triggered in both. They'll get into short, they get taken out vice versa. If they're lucky, one will get triggered and the other will act as a stop. So that's why you get the spike, because uh, all those orders, it, dozens and dozens of orders up there get hit and it drags it right up. Uh, and then of course they, they take profits, so you get the pullback.
uh, I've, I've actually taken profits off up here because more data coming out in three minutes. I do not want to be. Uh, I got got plus just under plus twenty. Uh, the RSI is high. Stochastics are getting high. I mean, this could just shoot up, but with uh, more jobs data, uh, it could be. We could get another whip. I, uh, either way, I don't want to be on the wrong side of that. But I'll re-enter uh, depending on um, how the market handles this. Right, data must be out. I could have just put a stop under there. Could have just put a stop to break even. Uh, we've got a very nice 60-minute close above the trend line here. I think we'll get a pullback. At least I hope we get a pullback. Otherwise, uh, my paltry little 18, 20 points, whatever it is, is not going to look that big. But it's a risk. I wasn't prepared to sit in this. There'll be other opportunities if this data is good and the markets like it. Plenty of time in the U.S. market to uh, get in. No idea what the data is. I haven't. I have not checked the data. Uh, not interested in data. I'm just trading what I see. So they're pulling it back at the moment. That's fine. Uh, this is we're coming back to the trend line here. So if this, so I'll, I'll let them. Let's see if we get some profit taking, and let's see if we get some reversal bars down at these levels here for a re-entry. So uh, I would very much like this to come down. Uh, see if we can hold the 320 area, or may, we may even come right down to the 300 area. The 320 area is a 50% fibs. Uh, right a fibs level here, even. Uh, so if we could come down to 320, that would be great. And th uh, but I'd want a reversal bar wherever we land. I want want to see a reversal bar. So you can see why I came out. No idea what the data is. It could be brilliant. It could be dreadful. It could be mediocre. No idea. I'll just trade what I see. Right, I'm looking to go long here. There's a stopping bar on the two minutes. So I've gone long here, out before the data came out, up there, <coughs> re-entered here. Just you know, seven minutes ago we had another lot, second lot of data out. So one lot of data at quarter past the hour, one lot of data at half past the hour. This was the move at quarter past the hour. This was the reaction to the data at the quarter past, at half past the hour, a pullback. So let's see if I can get if this is another wave up. Uh, if you look at the five, uh, the, so the 60 minutes, it's a nice pullback to the 60 minute bar, just above the 50% zone. We're just trying to break out from the last hourly high on the 60 minute chart. So let's see if. Uh, we can break this and then break the high of this bar up here at 356. It's, it's a pretty clean chart so far. It's a uh, you know, nice spike up. Stopping bar for one wave. Stopping bar for potentially wave two. Let's see what we got. C crossing of these stochastics. Um, RSI is, is getting high. So we are a little bit expensive here. But let's just see if we can break up. You know, the cash market's not open for 50 minutes, so uh, not expecting too much out of this. And it's starting to back up to this is the area where we uh, reached last time in terms of closes. That is uh, very close to that. So we could 
see some selling up here, certainly some profit taking. A lot of, tra a lot of futures traders will just scout for 10, 20 points, which is why you tend to get quite sharp moves in this. But if we can close above this area here, then I would definitely hold. If we close above 340, I would definitely hold. So just you know, being very, just monitoring the price action very, very carefully. Starting to see a bit of um, momentum. Yeah, like I said, we this is a p very nice pullback in a 60-minute chart. If we can break above, I mean, certainly close above this high, then uh, we might get something out of it. I'm not looking for a huge move because the Dow's the cash market is not open yet. Uh, Stochastics is getting high, RSI is getting high. We're getting close to that spike. So we'll probably see a lot of spelling at that top of that spike. Okay, so we've got a bit of a reversal bar up there, so I've taken half off up here. If we close down here, I'm going to take the other half off. I'm not going to wait, I'm not going to put, put a stop to break even, I'm just going to take the rest off if we close down here. Okay, so it's very slow. Uh, like I said, I took it off for a, for a few points profit, uh, just there. So I took it at 27 took it off at 38 so yeah, another 10 11 points so that's okay I mean plenty of time I'm gonna leave it there for now because uh, this is gonna get you know it's a reversal bar up there lower closes just looks as if uh, it wants to come down now uh, so I'll just show you what I was doing this morning in the euro session on the pound did this live in the room So I marked off support and resistance, um, waited until the FTSE opened. That's where the FTSE opened up there. So uh, in, this is my support and resistance I marked off. Um, initially, when the FTSE opened, it closed above that resistance. But look at the RSI and the stochastic, very high. So I didn't take it. I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't go long. Puts in. So it closes below resistance, opens and closes below resistance, and then breaks this little um, CBO here. So I went short once it once it closed below there. Added to the position on a pullback here once we close below this trend line support, and took some off down here. Reloaded on a retest of resistance, and then just trail stopped it down. Yeah, every time it dropped, just kept my stop up here, kept my stop here, um, and then w I took it off right down here when we hit 150%. So I've missed out on this little move here, but we're talking about 15 points. So if it drops much further, I, I don't care because I've got I've got my profit, uh, got my day's money, and so on. Now we did this. I did this in a room yesterday in front of an audience. If you want to join me in these rooms, uh, in the US session and the Euro session, then drop me an email. A two, for the, I normally charge a nominal fee for a two-week trial. I'll offer you a free two-week trial uh, and then see if you like it, see if you make money out of it, and then see if you want to join our traders community. Okay, so there's a couple of trades there today. So a small amount of money on the Dow so far, but the Dow hasn't even opened yet. So this is okay, this is the Dow on the five minute. Um, so email me any questions. Otherwise, um, watch out for more information.